The term business decision was created by DBs who had to attempt to tackle Earl Campbell. Oh my God. <laughs> you had to get him before he got going, because once he got going, uh, boy, it was, it was like a truck. He was 230 pounds with 36 inch thighs. You know, many times as a young man, I noticed another man's thighs. It took an entire defense to get this man down, literally. He's the only player in NFL history who's won Offensive Player of the Year three consecutive times to start their career. He was an MVP in just his second NFL season, and he's the greatest power back the NFL has ever seen. Meet the most feared running back of all time. Earl Campbell was born on March 29, 1955 in Tyler, Texas, which is how he got the nickname the Tyler Rose. He was raised as one of 11 children, and because the Campbell family struggled financially, Earl and the rest of his siblings worked from a young age. His father, Bert, worked two jobs that were separated by day and night. When the sun came up, he worked in the rose fields with his kids, and after the sun went down, he worked at Kmart. But when Earl was just 11 years old, disaster struck. His father tragically passed away from a heart attack, and this is when football came into the picture for Earl. But at a position wildly different from what made him a Hall of Famer. He started out as a kicker. But just one year later, after noticing Dick Buckus had bow legs just like his, Campbell decided to model his game after Buckus and become a linebacker. I wanted to be the next Dick Buckus. I wanted to be a linebacker. So he played linebacker from junior high until he was a junior at John Tyler High School, when Earl's head coach, Corky Nelson, chose him to be the team's new running back. And to say the position change was a struggle for Campbell would be an understatement. I'd run up to the line of scrimmage, drop the ball, and I'd run up the line of scrimmage, just fumble. You know, I just didn't want to do that. But what Campbell did have, because of his linebacker background, was a fearless mentality, and he sought out contact. So when the rest of his game came together in his senior season, he was simply unstoppable. He was the most dominant high school football player I had seen had probably ever seen. Not only did Campbell put up 2,036 rushing yards, 225 total yards per game, and 29 touchdowns, but John Tyler High School also went 15-0 to win their first state title in 43 years. And Campbell scored the game-winning touchdown in the finals by bulldozing two players on his way to the end zone. Then came the national buzz. Campbell was named Mr. Football USA of 1973, and he was so physically dominant that coaches even thought he could go pro out of high school. Former Oklahoma head coach Barry Switzer famously said, Campbell was the only player he ever saw who could have gone straight from high school to the NFL and immediately become a star. And that statement was all but confirmed by Campbell's even more iconic college career. He received offers from the likes of Houston, Oklahoma, Arkansas, and Baylor. But after being heavily recruited by those powerhouses, the Tyler Rose took his talents to Austin, attending the University of Texas, and the legend of the human wrecking ball was born. Campbell's Texas career from 1974 to 1977 was arguably the best years ever seen by a Longhorn running back, which is really saying something, given the insane list of backs who have worn the burnt orange. Campbell arrived on campus with all of his clothes in just one grocery bag, and he received a tape of an NFL legend that would change how he viewed the running back position. The tape was of Jim Brown, and Campbell would project it on his dorm room wall, studying his game. That's when his true power back form was born. He said, after watching Brown, I just couldn't believe this guy, that he could run over people like that. So I just kind of made it up in my mind that that was how I wanted to be. And boy, did he ever. Over Campbell's next four years at Texas, he imposed his will on all of college football. As a freshman, Earl rushed for 928 yards and six touchdowns, earning the Southwest Conference Newcomer of the Year award. But that was just the beginning. In his sophomore campaign, not only did he lead the Longhorns to an 11-2 record, but Campbell established himself as one of the best backs in the country, rushing for 1,118 yards and 13 touchdowns, earning All-American honors. And despite nagging hamstring injuries throughout his junior season, Campbell still ran for nearly 100 yards a game. But his senior year was like nothing we've ever seen before. Earl Campbell was a man amongst boys. No Nobody was safe, not even 2,000-pound animals like Texas mascot Bevo. He didn't run into Bevo, he knocked Bevo on his ass. Campbell put together one of the greatest college football seasons ever, leading the nation in both rushing yards with 1,744 and rushing touchdowns with 18. Not to mention, he led Texas to an undefeated regular season and won the first Heisman Trophy in school history. When it was all said and done, Campbell amassed 4,571 total yards and 41 touchdowns during his time at Texas. It felt like you could throw your entire defense at Earl Campbell and you still wouldn't be able to stop him. When asked about his game, Earl said, My running style was just kind of head-on because I couldn't dance. 
chance. I couldn't put a move on you. I had two things I could do. I could run over you, and I could put a good stiff arm on you. That was about it. But that style of play put fear in the hearts of his opponents, and the Houston Oilers wanted to make sure they didn't end up on the wrong side of Earl Campbell. So they selected him first overall in the 1978 NFL Draft. Right away, Houston knew they had something special. Even their equipment manager was shocked, saying that we make four sizes of thigh pads, small, medium, large, and Earl Campbell. Then, on Campbell's very first play, he took a screen 73 yards for a touchdown, letting the league know the human wrecking ball had arrived. Campbell's rookie year was just a coronation of the league's new most feared runner, as he not only ran through the record books, but also any defenders in his way. He was trucking guys week after week, like LA's all-pro linebacker Isaiah Robertson in week four. The Rams had to rip his jersey off to get him down. But it was one game in particular that really put him on the map as the power back of the NFL, and that was week 12 against the Miami Dolphins on Monday Night Football. Campbell steamrolled the Dolphins, rushing for 199 yards, four touchdowns, and scoring twice in the last seven minutes. This not only got Houston the win, but it also put Campbell over the 1,000 rushing yard threshold. He had great train, power. He was a rhinoceros with a football. It's like tackling a Coke machine. And this was just a glimpse of how good Campbell was his rookie year, because he led the league with 1,450 rushing yards, which was a rookie record at the time, and finished second in rushing touchdowns with 13. And where do we even begin with the awards he won? Campbell was named Offensive Rookie of the Year, Offensive Player of the Year, a Pro Bowler, and First Team All-Pro. Then, in the playoffs, the Oilers rode their star runner to the AFC Championship game, where they fell to the Steelers. But Campbell had over 20 carries in each of the Oilers' three playoff games. He averaged 88 yards per game and scored two touchdowns. And despite his insane rookie season, Campbell only got better in year two. His power was on full display right from the jump. Just look at Washington trying to tackle this guy in week one, or what he did to Dallas on Thanksgiving. 195 yards and two touchdowns? Are you kidding me? Campbell led the Oilers to an 11-5 record and led the league in both rushing yards with 1,697 and rushing touchdowns with 19. And somehow, he won even more awards than the previous year. He was named Offensive Player of the Year, a Pro Bowler, and First Team All-Pro again, but in addition, he won NFL MVP, becoming the first Oiler ever to receive the honor. The only issue with the start to Campbell's career was that the Oilers were in the same division as the Steel Curtain Steelers, who they fell to yet again in the AFC Conference Championship. But even in defeat, his presence was felt. Legendary Steel Joe Green claimed that Campbell could inflict more damage than any other running back he's ever faced. And despite his team's playoff struggle, in year three, Earl Campbell did what seemed impossible. He got even better. Defenses were stacking so many guys in the box to stop him that Campbell even threw a touchdown in week one. But passing the ball wasn't physical enough for the human wrecking ball. So for the rest of the 1980 season, he proceeded to destroy every team the Oilers played on the ground. Campbell rushed for 1,934 yards, the second most ever at the time, rushing for over 200 yards on four different occasions. He clinched his third rushing title in a row and his third consecutive executive Offensive Player of the Year award to start his career, a record that still stands to this day. But yet again, the Oilers fell short in the playoffs, losing their wildcard matchup to the Oakland Raiders 27-7. And then the only head coach Campbell ever had in the NFL, Bum Phillips, was replaced. This is where Earl Campbell's meteoric rise was slowed and doubt began to creep in. 1981 was another Pro Bowl season for Campbell, his fourth in a row, but he posted career lows in rushing yards and touchdowns, and Houston didn't make the playoffs for the first time in his career. Then 1982 and 83 was officially the breaking point for Campbell. As if a player strike in 82 and a 1 8 record for the Oilers wasn't enough, in 83 the Oilers went 2 14, even with Campbell's 1,301 rushing yards and 12 touchdowns, causing him to ask out of Houston. And on top of the Oilers' struggles, the beating Campbell took week in and week out started to catch up to him. From 1978, when Earl entered the league, to 1983, nobody had more carries. Add in Campbell's bruising running style, and you have a recipe for a short career. He only played two more NFL seasons getting traded to the Saints midway through the 84 season and retiring following the 85 season. Even with the violence Earl Campbell brought to the gridiron every week, he only missed six games to injury throughout his career. His toughness was unheard of. Unfortunately, his style of play eventually led him to having tragic health issues later in life, which is why his game can never be replicated. It's hard to fathom the sheer force Earl Campbell brought to the gridiron during his prime. In his prime, that was the standard by which everything was measured in the sport. 
And despite his short career, Campbell's impact was so great that he was inducted into the Pro Football Hall of Fame in 2001 and has been acknowledged as one of the greatest NFL players of all time and the greatest power back the game has ever seen.